What is up everyone? Binary Tech Labs back again. And today's objective is to show you how to turn your wired doorbell into a smart doorbell using Home Assistant and a Wemos D1 Mini. You don't need to be an electronics engineer and you won't need to solder anything if you don't want to. Not to mention, this is a low cost project that can be completed quickly. Today we're going to cover the following. Hardware requirements, flashing the Wemos D1 Mini, wiring your new smart doorbell, integrating with Home Assistant, and a few simple automations. Timestamps are below, so you can jump right into the parts that interest you most. As is customary, links to the hardware and software I use, as well as recommendations, will be included in the description below. If this seems interesting to you, stick around. Let's get started. In addition to Home Assistant and a wired doorbell, you will need a 5 volt power source, a Wemos D1 Mini, a single channel Wemos D1 Mini relay shield, and a project box. The project box will just keep things clean and tidy, but as you will see, you don't have to use this identical gear, as I'll be using a different relay for this lab. But I do use a relay shield in my home setup, and I solder my power wires just to be completely transparent. All right, this is not going to be an in-depth video on ESP Home, but just realize that there are other ways to use ESP Home besides through Home Assistant, like we will be doing in this video. You can learn more about ESP Home by checking out their documentation. I've provided the link below. To begin, click on ESP Home, and inside of ESP Home, we're going to create a new device and follow the wizard. Don't worry, we're going to be replacing most of what it puts in here for us. We're just going to go ahead and call it Doorbell. And then we're going to pick the board. As I said, I'm going to be using the Wemos D1 Mini. So that is the board I've selected. If you're using a different board, you can select it here. So perfect. Our doorbell has been created. We don't have anything to flash onto it just yet. So we'll just skip this part. Now, if you go over to the GitHub page, you will see that I've added all the components that we will be using inside of this YAML file. So inside the YAML file, just go ahead and copy everything and we're going to paste it into ESP Home. Don't worry, we will go over it. So you will notice that for the Wi-Fi SSID and password and for the web server, it says secret and Wi-Fi SSID and Wi-Fi password. This secret.yaml file is different than the Home Assistant one and it is located up here. So in the secrets.yaml, you'll put in your Wi-Fi SSID, your password, and the web server password. You'll save it and close. So just to explain a little bit, ESP Home uses YAML files to generate the firmware that's going to be flashed into the Wemos D1 Mini or board that you have chosen. I've added a number of notes to the YAML file on GitHub to help you understand what's going on. But if you do choose a different board other than the Wemos D1 Mini that I have selected, you are going to have to change some of the GPIO pins and adjust some of the configuration. Okay, let's go over the doorbell YAML file we've just created and uploaded to our D1 Mini. The top part of the YAML file is just the configuration. It's the name that we gave ESP Home, which was doorbell, and the board that we've selected, which was a D1 Mini. The logger, pretty self-explanatory, just enables logging so that you can see serial console. The over-the-air password is just the password that you will use if you are updating the D1 Mini wirelessly. We have our Wi-Fi connection settings and an access point, which is a fallback. This fallback, like is listed on ESP Home, if the Wi-Fi fails to connect, it's an access point that you can connect and then go in and manually enter in your Wi-Fi settings. I don't use, but I have added in here, if you're using MQTT, you can add that information there. The web server we're enabling on port 80, and it is just going to be the domain of the device. In this case, it would be doorbell.local, or if you go to the IP address that you have chosen, if you use a static IP, or it'll be the DHCP IP that has been selected for it. And that just looks like this the same information that we see coming through into Home Assistant. The next part is just going to sync the time with Home Assistant, the tech sensor, 
that we're going to use is just a version of ESP Home that was used to compile. So if we go and see here, the version that was used was this version. This Wi-Fi info platform sensor, I just mainly use for debugging purposes and you can expose the IP address, SSID, BSSID, MAC address, and the latest scan results. And that just shows up here. The next sensor is a template sensor and it's just for the doorbell uptime. And then we perform a Lambda function on that uptime sensor just to make it human readable. As without that Lambda function, your uptime will just report in seconds. But with the Lambda function, you get something that is a little bit more friendly. We're also exposing the Wi-Fi signal strength, which we can see here. This global variable that we're defining just stores the state of our chime, whether or not it is active on or off. And then the last parts are just the switches to restart the D1 Mini. This switch activates the doorbell chime relay, turning the relay on or off. So within Home Assistant, as I demonstrate later, you can trigger your doorbell from within Home Assistant without having to press the doorbell button. This template sensor here is just updating the global variable that we set. Finally, the doorbell button is a binary sensor. And then we have added a little bit of automation right within our YAML. And if you need to debounce or filter, there's a section in here for the filters. And that concludes our doorbell YAML. As I said, additional information can be found on ESP Home's website if you'd like to look into it further. So the D1 Mini must be connected via USB for the first time we flash it. However, subsequent flashing can be done over the air or OTA for short. But in my setup here in my lab, I don't have MDNS. So I always have to do my flashing with the board plugged into my Raspberry Pi. So we'll just go back in to edit and we're going to now flash it. I'll hit install and here are the choices that you can select from. And as I said, I'm going to be flashing it from the computer that is running ESP Home, which is my Raspberry Pi. I'll select the USB device and it'll begin to configure the D1 Mini and flash everything that we've written in there. First time that this compiles, it will take a little bit of time because it does have to download and compile all the different components that we have put into our YAML file. It's time to wire up our newly made smart doorbell. I'll just hit stop here and I will go grab the D1 Mini and install it into my breadboard circuit. All right, this is how it appears on my bench, which is why I prefer using project boxes to keep things tidy when it's installed in the house later. So here you can use this wiring example to see how this operates. The way you connect up the circuit will depend on the hardware you're using, and you may have to adjust the ESP Home YAML file to suit your use case. In my lab, I have used a relay that requires 5 volts DC and an input signal that also takes 5 volts DC to operate the relay. This relay in turn will operate the doorbell, and the doorbell button is wired as an input pull down to the D1 Mini. Are you finished yet? No? Okay, okay, just pause the video while you wire. It's okay, I'll wait. So, pushing the doorbell button should now cause the bell to ring. You're probably thinking, we just installed a bunch of gear and the doorbell still functions as it did before? Wonderful, do you even know what you're doing? Absolutely, yes I do. Or at least I hope I do. But seriously, if it works, that's a fantastic thing, since it indicates our code on the D1 Mini is functioning. Let's see how we go about configuring the doorbell in Home Assistant now. So one thing to mention in your YAML file 
for some of the IDs. I like to use a consistent naming scheme for most devices in which the domain will be the device and in this instance it will be doorbell followed by the room and underscore the entity and underscore and the position in a room or location for the rest of the name. This will make it easier to create and manage automations as the larger your entity list grows, the more difficult it is unless you do utilize a standard. So going back to Home Assistant, when it comes to integrating this new doorbell, assuming everything is working properly, Home Assistant should discover everything right away, unleashing lots of new entities to play with. All that remains is for us to include it into a dashboard card. We go to configuration, and we go to devices. Mine does not show up in this list, but that's fine. We can go add integration and we search for ESP and we're just gonna add it. Now, as I said, my MDNS doesn't work, so I will be using the IP address. In your case, you would just type in doorbell and then click submit and Home Assistant should find it. But if you do have any trouble, just use the IP address you can get that IP address when you flash the D1 Mini in the logs. When it does connect to your Wi-Fi, it will give you an IP address. I'll just go ahead and put mine in. And hit submit. And there it finds it. Now if you want, you can add this to an area. I'm just gonna leave it blank and click finish. Now if we go over to devices, we see doorbell show that shows up. If we click on that, now we can see everything that Home Assistant is bringing in from our YAML. So here's the button, and if we press the button, you can see it picked up the button, and it's also bringing up our chime relay. And we can, from Home Assistant, activate it as well. So our doorbell isn't quite smart yet. We'll have to do it with our automations. I'll give you a few examples, but your options are only limited by what you have installed on your system. So one possible automation is to turn off the chime at a specific time, such as at night, or if you have young children and they've just gone down for a nap and you don't want anyone to disturb you. You can always come in and manually turn the chime off. And as you see, if I push the button now, it sees it as on, but we got no doorbell ring because the chime is not active. And you can do this with an automation by just clicking on automations and following the prompts. Also, another example of an automation that you can add is if you are in the backyard and you're gardening and someone comes up to the house, obviously presses the doorbell, you can get notified on your phone that someone has just pressed the doorbell and then you can go and answer it. You could also have it notify one of those speakers when the doorbell is pushed. You know the ones. I won't name them here. So, if you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you. I hope you discovered something useful in today's lab. I'd love to hear your questions or concerns in the comment section below, and I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.